Welcome to Whole Team Eats Podcast, a 24-8 media production. Ever wonder who trains your favorite athlete? Join Tim Miller as he takes a look at the behind the scenes training of professional and collegiate athletes. Tim connects with trainers, athletes, and others in the sports community to share their stories. This podcast is dedicated to highlighting the work of athletes and trainers to inspire action and build community. What's up, everyone? Welcome to an all new episode of Whole Team Eats Podcast. This is season two. Episode 5, I'm your host, Tim Miller, and on this show, I sit down with AB, founder and CEO of ABX. Growing up in New Orleans, AB had a passion for sports and training early on. His main focus was track and field, where he was a state record holder. At the age of 22, AB started his training career at a local park, accumulating 120 clients. At age 25, AB made the decision to open his own 20,000 square foot training facility to expand his training capabilities to meet his clients' needs. On the show, we discuss how AB worked two jobs to support his family before making the switch into training. AB never had a dedicated mentor, which forced him to learn useful skills and quickly adapt to launch his training business. His focus on speed attracted some of the top talent in the local area, and his work was put on display when his client, Dion Jones, ran one of the fastest 40 times at the NFL Combine. It is my pleasure to introduce AB, founder and CEO of ABX to the show. AB, welcome. Appreciate it, Tim, my guy. Yeah, I've been, uh, been looking forward to this episode for some time since we uh, first connected and where most of my episodes start out. If you could, now that we're in the beginning of 2023, just recap your training in 2022, maybe your, your, the growth of your gym and, and how things went in 2022, and then what you're looking forward to as uh, the start of training in 2023. Man, yeah, that's a good question. Like I said, so um, the 2022 season, a year of a lot of growth, a year of building uh, systems, the year of just uh, getting a lot of data to actually uh, complete what we're trying to do, and that's just launch our uh, ABX Speed School program. So we've done that in 2023, man, it's trying to hit the ground running and really take a lot of things more virtual. So that's the big mission for this year. And uh, is virtual a new thing for you or uh, have you been doing virtual for some time now? No, I haven't actually because I'm really particular about the data I put out and the information I put out. I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, I want everything done a certain type of way, even when it comes to content, bro. So um, this year, uh, virtual is definitely where to go with anyone in the training industry. I mean, you know, it's no overhead going virtual. Uh, you can reach more masses of people, state to state, worldwide. So that's definitely the goal. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing more and more trainers start to create those online training programs to just yeah. expand their presence, um, you know, nationally exactly. or, or worldwide in some cases. Um, yeah. If you could, where uh, we start a lot of our, our episodes is just talking about yourself and your background, you know, where you grew up. Uh, playing a sports in high school, and then eventually how you came into training. Yeah, so I'm 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 28 years old as of right now. Uh, I started training when I was 22. Uh, I went to University of New Orleans, studied kinesiology. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, outside of that, uh, I did play high school football and track, but my bread and butter was track. Uh, I was the state record holder in Louisiana until. Uh, uh, Christian Fulton broke my record when I was placed for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, so my event was I was a jumper. I did hurdlers. So that's where the name kind of ABX originates from. Uh, my friend came up with, he say he was the most explosive guy that he's ever seen. So I kind of took that name and created a blueprint out of it. So that's my forte, speed explosion, you know, when it comes to doing what we do. And uh, could you talk about, so you, you play uh football and you run track in high school and now yeah. you go and you run track in college at the university of new orleans you have a background in exercise science you study kinesiology yeah. um, how did that lead into you becoming the trainer that you are today you know six seven years later uh it led to that because just like a lot of people you know you want to stay within the field stay with the, within the realm of what you know so i decided to study kines um, how I ended up leading to me the position I am today is, is really a funny, unique story, man. Because uh, so I ended up having my daughter my after my uh, senior of high school. 
So that ended up uh, being the reason I ended up staying home and going to school locally. Uh, working two jobs, man, it was pretty intense. And I'll never forget, uh, I was at the verge of cons- honestly wanting to stop going to school because it was just so much. I was uh, loading on myself. And uh, around that same time, Deion Jones was getting ready for NFL Combine. My guy up here, uh, four or five, he went to LSU. Um, and around that time, I'm a big believer, man, taking advantage of opportunity within the opportunity. So I ended up taking a break from school to train Deion Jones for the, uh, his NFL Pro Day. So prior to that, he went to the NFL Combine. He went to 454, I believe. Uh, two weeks later, we came trained for the NFL his LSU Pro Day. I'm sorry. And he went 438. And that was one of the fastest all time uh, for a linebacker. So at that point, we, <laughs> we started moving. Yeah, and that might not seem like a lot in a 40 time to some people, but that is a huge difference. And especially for a linebacker at his weight, I don't know how big he is, but most linebackers, you know, that is extremely difficult to run what most wide receivers aren't even running as as a 3 8. So that speaks volumes to kind of the program that you had in place and the work that you do uh, with your clients, especially one of your first clients, Dion Jones. Mm-hmm. And it seems mm-hmm. like that was, just in listening to your story and, and talking beforehand, that was one of you, your big breaks into how you started the business that you have today was Dion Jones. Yeah. It's only right that his jersey's hanging on the background <laughs> as we record the podcast. <laughs> it's only right. <laughs> it's, only right. <laughs> it's only right. And Dion Jones, so he was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons out of LSU. Uh, this past season, he was with the Cleveland Browns, and mm-hmm. now, if I'm correct, I think as we were talking before the show, he is now a free agent. Yep, he is a free agent. On this was contract year with the Falcons until they traded him to the Browns. So now he just did his thing this past season. He ended up the season with uh, two interceptions, two forced fumbles, four sacks. So now we just sit, wait to see who calls. Yeah, I, I don't think it will take long for him to find a new team. Uh, no, nah, not at all. Speed kills nowadays, man. Everyone, need, everyone needs speed. Yeah, so, yeah. In, in the modern day, uh, you know, NFL, where it's, uh, you know, very much predicated on passing and mm-hmm. speed, uh, players like Deion Jones are more in demand than ever. So yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm sure he'll uh, continue to do well. And uh, obviously, whenever he does well, it's a reflection on you and your gym. Yeah, um, man. So going into ABX, uh, so you, you have a daughter, senior year of high school, and it, it presents some opportunities. Now you're staying at home. You know some people in the area. You have a background in you know track and field and uh, kinesiology. Uh, can you talk more about ABX, like you know where it's come over the last, not just six years, but over the last year or two? Um, mm-hmm. We've seen stuff on social media, but why don't you tell our listeners uh, like more about the backstory of ABX? Yeah, so that's, that's that's awesome because um I don't think a lot of people understand the backstory because I I don't want to say I make it seem easy, but I make it seem effortless because the ones who've been following my journey, I started at the park. And I started at the park, but a lot of people didn't realize I didn't just up and open the facility. Uh, they see my facility now is 20,000 square feet of space. I mean, we have a basketball court, sand pit, weight room, uh, speed room. But the upbringing of it started at the park, like I said. Um, within the park, I ended up gravitating over 120 clients currently at that time before I even opened up my facility. And that was a big part on um, you know, giving this to the community, man. That's That was my big reason, my big goal. Uh, I helped out more kids than I actually charged. <laughs> and I'm a big believer on the back end. You know, your blessings always you know, come back around to you. So that's what we got when we created this place. Yeah, I, I think um, you know, we, we've had some trainers on uh, on the podcast before from the New Orleans area. If I'm... Yeah. I'm if I'm correct, is it Harrell Park? Yeah, look, you know a little something, Tim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, That's, that, that park is honestly very infamous down in our area. Uh, I don't know if you know the BT Jordan of the world. Um, some lot of successful sex with big-time trainers that train at that park. So, yeah. Yeah, so we've had two trainers come on our podcast. Um, it is Coach Nat of NXT uh, mm-hmm. Training and then mm-hmm. Gary Schreffler of, yep. um, GLS, yep. of GLS Training. So, you know, we've heard a little bit about the area, um, and we'll go into that in a bit. Obviously, uh, you know, recently we've seen you doing some collaboration work with Gary of, uh, you know, GLS and, and Go to Movement. Yeah. Um, 
but but going back to Harrell Park for a second, I have heard a few things about mm-hmm. Harrell Park. Obviously, it's it's very well noted and is had a lot of very good athletes have trained there mm-hmm. or started there as a youth athlete. Obviously, it's a uh, a hotbed for you know SEC schools and uh, yeah. you know, other schools around the country that produces yeah. some of the best athletes that are now uh, in the and NFL, NBA, oh, and a variety of other sports. Yeah. Um, I was told and correct me if I'm wrong, that that turf, so the Harrell Park turf, was donated um, from a Super Bowl field. Yep. I don't know if yep, you that, know that Yep, story. that's right. The Saints won the Super Bowl. Yep. Okay. That turf was donated to Harrell. Yeah, so that, that, that field has a lot of rich history on it, man. It does. It has not only the NFL, but if you think about all the athletes who have ever trained there. Um, yeah, Odell know. Beckham, um, Leonard Fournette. Uh, I mean, I could keep going, man. There's so many kind of hard to say how many, you know, comes to my head, but anyone who's who has trained at that part. Yeah. Um, and then going, so we just mentioned uh, Gary Schreffler of, uh, you know, GLS and, and Go to Movement. Can you talk uh, to some of our listeners and, and tell them about what the collaboration looks like and why you're collabing and, yeah. and why you guys need each other in, in, in essence? Yeah. So what we have going on over here on and why it makes sense of us to collab with uh, – you know, Gary at GLS because we have uh, a speed program that's who, you know, predominantly known for. It's called ABX Speed School. Now, ABX Speed School is kind of like the modern day uh, Parisi Speed School. Um, we teach uh, not just the biomechanics, but we teach on what it takes for you to get there. Uh, I actually quiz my kids every month also with assessment day. So we teach our assessment day like NFL combine. We're doing broad verticals, broad jump vertical, 5 10, 5. We're doing shuttle run. I quiz them on 10 things, you know. Uh, depending on what the program was based off throughout the month. And what Gary has going on, man, it, it keeps my kids um, injury-free. It keeps my kids, you know, conscious on putting their bodies in the best optimal position to be explosive. Um, so what Gary has going on is not just a pre-injury, a post-injury thing. It's also about, like I said, knowing the correct positions to have your body to mas- maximize your explosion, maximize um you know, just just the small things that it takes to be the best athlete you could possibly be. Yeah, and uh, you know, we, from our listeners who remember Gary's episode, he is on the preventative uh, you know, care side and uh, mm-hmm. you know, making sure that the athletes are in a good position to succeed injury free. Because yeah. we know one thing that uh, you know your uh, availability is everything when it comes everything. to sports. Uh, yes. Um, and we want to make sure that you know our, our athletes are staying injury free, so that they can continue to play on the field, and uh, you know excel at their sport, whether it's getting a scholarship for college or excelling mm-hmm. to the professional level. Um, mm-hmm. As we talked about in the beginning of the show, uh, we see a lot of different injuries with athletes, um, and something with Dion Jones is when you're injury free and you're able to train correctly in the off season, not just always rehabbing from an injury. Mm-hmm. You can move your forty time from a four five, five or whatever it was to a four three eight, and that difference in speed when you're training when you're healthy can mean a big difference from where you're drafted, uh, yeah. and that can yeah. be impactful monetarily uh, to that yeah. athlete. And you know, a lot of athletes obviously give back to their communities and their families, so it's it's very impactful in a variety of ways. Um, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So we talked about kind of the straight line of. Uh, you know, uh, ABX and where it is today and how it got started. I'm assuming like most other trainers, there were obstacles and setbacks along the way. Uh, obviously having, uh, you know, your daughter as a senior in high school, working two jobs, it puts you in a position where there was a lot of, I guess, stressful times at one point in time. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you talk uh, about what that was like and some of the setbacks even, you know, before your gym, and then even in your six or seven years running ABX, what kind of setbacks that you have and how you overcome those setbacks? Um, good question, Tim. So I think setbacks and adversity, of course, is, is it comes to everyone. It's nothing new. Uh, the type of adversity and setbacks I faced was just um, find a system and sticking with it. Uh, because once you really you know decide to take over an overhead, it's important that you have a nice flow of, of you know clientele that continues to come in and out. So we have an arsenal of different programs we launch month to month. One month might be agility, one month might be speed school, uh, one month it might be uh, change direction. So some some 
like I said, some uh, obstacles we face, man, is just making sure we really have a team, honestly. That's the most important thing. A team who understands everything, a team who's on the same page, a team who talks the same you know, dialogue. So finding that group of people. And I, I'll say, uh, I'm just going into 2023. I'm confident within the team I have right now. So across the board, everyone speaks the same knowledge and they're completely transparent. So ABX Speed School is a program we're building right now. And I must say, this is... This is something I'm very, very proud of. And I think anyone, no one across the South has seen a program like this that we're building, bro. Yeah, we're, we're excited to, to see what 2023 and 2024 brings for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. How big is your team at this point in time? So I have six people. I have a content director. Uh, I have an assistant. Um, I also have uh, four other trainers. Okay. Yeah. And those have come on over time or more recently? Yeah, we come in. We've come. We've come on over time. I've met everyone organically, man. Uh, my content director was a high school kid. Uh, he ended up going to college in Texas. I told him if he came back home and worked for me, I would pay him double than with the job he was making out there in Texas. And uh, he's he's so creative. He, like people like this, you only come across every so often. So I make sure I take care of him. Uh, my assistant from God's grace. He walked in one day. Uh, he was a college kid also, looking for opportunity. Uh, we molded him. He's he's so uh, hungry for knowledge. So uh, he takes everything like a grain of salt keeps moving. Uh, the other one is my, my girlfriend. Uh, she runs the women's program around here. Uh, her results are amazing, so she makes sure all the females are getting the same uh, duplicate of what she's producing through herself. So, and the other three are uh, independent contractors, you know, who are also pretty awesome people, man. Yeah, it's always great to have a team that you can trust and rely on because uh, the one thing we see a lot of trainers when they, when they struggle to expand or they're a little bit apprehensive yes. is that they don't want the quality to deteriorate from that client not being with you every second. So being able mm -hmm. to grow and delegate to other trainers is crucial in the expansion of ABX or any other gym or trainer that we uh, encounter here on the show or mm -hmm. uh, you know that will in the encounter in the future. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm assuming that you've had a couple athletes who gave you a big break and kind of led into your training career. Are there any other mentors or other trainers? Um, doesn't have to be a trainer. Any other mentors who have guided you into where you are today? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say one thing about the position I am, and uh, I never had that direct mentor. Um, I always craved it, you know, Having a mentor allows you to not uh, make mistakes that you know someone before you made. Uh, but I'm a big reader. Uh, I studied people like the Tom Shaws of the world, Mackie Shieldstone. Uh, I actually have a relationship with Mackie Shieldstone. Uh, I work closely with his son named Spencer Shieldstone in the nutrition program. So uh, if it's anyone, I, I, I actually have a question um, of, of, of needing to go to it. It is the Shieldstones. But besides that, man, um, just having that network of, of people within this industry is always good to rely on and lean on. Because uh, there's, there's nothing better than bouncing things and ideas off your peers. So I say that's that's more so rather than just having a particular um, uh, yeah, person to go to. Yeah, and, and every so often we see that, right? A, a lot of folks say they have a direct mentor. But every so often, like you're saying, we, we find folks who didn't have a direct mentor, but kind of taught themselves and there's yeah. something powerful in learning from your mistakes right um yeah so yeah. It, it, it teaches you it almost makes you more hungry to to learn and avoid making mistakes mm -hmm. when you're working two jobs and you have young kids at home it can be that can be all the motivation you need um to yeah. go out and study and, and learn everything you need about not only the training side of things, but now you're a business owner and learning about the business side of things too. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, I've been looking at the other jerseys besides Deion Jones. Could you tell us about the other two jerseys hanging behind you? Man, so right here, the blue jersey, blue and yellow, that's actually uh, BJ Blunt uh, from the Southland Conference. He went to McNeese uh, State. And at meet McNeese, BJ did some incredible numbers, man. Right? Senior year, he had 140 tackles. He had 20 uh, tackles for loss, 11 and a half sacks, five force homers, and three picks. Um, so my guy got this. He got a shot in the NFL. Um, and unfortunately, it, it fell a little short. 
But this is one of the guys I worked with since he was probably a freshman uh, in college. Um, didn't have much, but he had his grind. He had heart. So that's one of the guys I kind of built this uh, place on his back. Just days after days after days, just us working and you know posting that content and seeing his progression. Uh, he kind of helped build the space, like I said, man. Over there we have my guy Gary Wallow, man. One of the most elite movers. I've ever trained. So Debo is the fastest linebacker I've ever trained. Gary Wallow is probably the most efficient moving linebacker I've ever trained, man. He's different. So, again, day after day, um, pushing out good content, people seeing the progression. And they kind of help build this place for us, my clientele, man. So I love those guys. Yeah, and we uh, we see the next wave all over. You do have a, a great content creator um, <laughs> to help you with that stuff. And we see the next wave of collegiate athletes and high school athletes on your social media one mm-hmm. that you put out today, uh, I believe it was Logan Diggs, uh, running back of Notre Dame, uh, yeah. who had a solid season himself. So we, we've seen that content come out, and uh, yeah. we're, we're looking forward to seeing more of that type of content come out. Yeah, uh, We've obviously talked a lot about football and football players, but out of curiosity, do you train more than just football? Do you train track and field or you know baseball yeah. or basketball or any other sports? Yeah, so the, the beauty of this program at AB actually sports training, man, is that it starts, the Genesis starts out with a linear speed program. But what makes it so, like I said, uh, different from the other speed school is that, you know, the only sports is about linear speed is, is track. So once we graduate from that program, I teach kids how to maintain speed in and out of change of direction. So I train soccer players, I train basketball players, um, not just football, I train hurdlers, <laughs> jumpers. And the, the ability to be able to do all that is not just I'm trying to reach out for more than I actually know. One thing about me is I never, you know, teach someone something I don't know. Uh, I was elite, uh, like I said, hurdler, uh, high jumper, uh, come out of high school. I went to college for that. Uh, when it came to speed, you know, that's, that's like I said, that's my forte. Uh, when it came to change direction, that's one thing I kind of self-taught myself. Uh, just maintaining speed. Speed. I'm sorry, in and out of space and change direction without decelerating. So, yeah, our program really touches the masses. <laughs> I'm proud of that, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's important in growing a business, right? Is not staying in one, uh, you know, market segment or expanding to, to multiple sports. That's obviously very important. I'm sure as a business owner, something you've learned and something that some trainers we speak with struggle with is, you know, they. they get a big facility and they have certain clientele, but sports, as we all know, is seasonal, right? So when those mm-hmm. clients or athletes are in season, uh, yep. it's more difficult to be training them. They're not at your facilities. In the off season, it, it's very easy if they're you know, living locally yep. and uh, you, know, you have a lot of time to spend with them. But being able to diversify your type of clientele helps with the seasonal effect Obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you have a lot of youth athletes. So when collegiate guys go back to school, yeah. you have youth athletes coming in. And, uh, you know, there's obviously a learning curve. But it seems like at 28 years old, you've already started to, uh, you know, overcome some of those hurdles that we see other people run into. Uh, yeah, man, we just can't stop. That's the thing about it. It's people, we get deterred easily. And uh, we just you, just, you can't stop. Uh, I'm big on not procrastinating. If I have something I want to do, I'm going to do it now. I don't care what resources I have. It's just you can't have those type of uh, excuses when it comes to you know doing sport, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I completely agree. Um, and, and do you find it more difficult to motivate players of one sport or different age groups? Uh, are certain players more motivated than others? I'm, I'm hoping the professional and collegiate guys are pretty self motivated, but everybody mm-hmm. as a trainer, right? Some people have a bad day or you know, they're Mm -hmm. in a little bit of a funk recovering from an injury, uh, whatever it may be. Do you find it difficult uh, to motivate players? And do you find that to be one of your your roles as a trainer? Yes, that's that's a great question also, Tim, um, because I think a lot of people understand that side of it. Anyone could be a great trainer, but not everyone could be a great teacher. Um, The psychology side of sports is is just as important as the the performance side. Um, Everyone's motivation levels is different. (laughs) You wouldn't think when it comes to pro guys and collegiate guys, um, but one thing I tell my guys all the time is we don't rely on music. Music is a form of cheap gas. Um, you want to also always be coasting. The reason you want to be coasting is because you want to find your why. You want to find your reason to doing what you do. And you want to always keep that as your fuel. That's not cheap gas. 
that's that diesel right there. So um, I preach that to everyone, man. When it comes to my kids, you you know, when it comes to training kids, you're just trying to instill a certain level of work ethic. Uh, when it comes to college guys, uh, they're there because they have that work level of work ethic. So with them, you teach them just to be a little more tuned on how to maintain cuts, certain angles. When it comes to lead guys, man, you just want them healthy. You know, by that by that time, um, you know, season is brutal. We're talking uh, football at this point. We're playing 18 game seasons. Yeah, but it's 18 game seasons now, man. So come out of college, you're going from having 10 games to almost 20. So it's more so just taking care of those guys' bodies and a lot of functional training with the lead guys. Yeah, I think uh, the toll that it takes on those guys is uh, can't can't be understated, and yeah. that has to be, you know, one of the reasons that we're seeing more and more trainers kind of flood into this industry. Uh, there's a need more than ever for trainers yeah. like yourself, um, and it's our job here at Twenty Four Eight, as we like to mention on some of these shows that what we're trying to do and the kind of the genesis behind 24-8 media is to try to showcase what the trainers do who train some of these athletes like yourself, mm -hmm. like Gary at GLS. We believe that your work should not go unnoticed and you know you should be able to yeah. be out there in front of the masses because what you do is extremely important. Athletes yeah. wouldn't be able to do what they do in their respective sports without you guys. Um, and I think there's a, a little bit of a disconnect between the credit that you guys get for putting the athlete in position to succeed uh, and what you guys do on a daily basis. So we're here to, here to kind of close that gap yep. and bring uh, or shed light on what you guys do every single day, day in, day out, not only with professional and collegiate guys, but also with youth athletes because you're building those guys from the ground up in most cases. Yeah. Um, yep. But it is, uh, it is something that we're seeing more and more of. Uh, exactly. so we, we've talked a lot about, you know, where you started, where ABX started. Uh, could you talk more about like what your typical work week looks like and uh, how that shifts both yeah. off season and in season? Well, right now, um, this is the story of my life. So this is peak season, of course. So right now, I have NFL pro day and combine training. I do from nine to eleven of uh, field work, and then we come back from one to three. So uh, when it comes to training, man, uh, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. Uh, I'm leaving my office at 8 p.m., analyzing data from 8 p.m. to almost 12 p.m. So night to the back at 5 again. So January, February, it's an eight-week cycle. This is the most prime time for me. I'm working on every hour, uh, meetings in between, talking to nutritionists, uh, um, therapists. And this is just the, the peak time just to make sure our guys – end up being where they need to be. And this is the opportunity of a lifetime. You know, you only get one shot to prep for, con for the combine. And also on the top, on the mix of that, we have our NFL guys are ready to, you know, get ready for their all season. So trying to program that also, man. So it's tough right now, but we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I would assume peak season comes with not a lot of sleep and, yeah. uh, you know, you're up early training, you're out late training. But this is something that trainers – look forward to all year round is this peak season with college and professional guys coming back to yeah. peak off season mode for them and getting their body and their minds kind of recalibrated and, uh, you know, rested and then getting ready to hit, hit the ground running with training. Yeah. Um, that's uh, interesting to hear. Uh, I would like to ask you, um, you've come a long way. You're 28 years old. You are already doing a great job building your business from the ground up. But where do you see ABX moving forward? So you have, you know, speed schools and you're a performance coach. Mm -hmm. You've started doing collabs with other trainers, which we think yep. is great yep. um, because we don't always see uh, trainers doing that. Yep. Um, but a lot of trainers can complement each other from, from their different styles of training and yep. their different businesses. Uh, where do you see ABX in three years or five years from now? I see ABX de developing uh, the most... Uh, elite uh, speed program, you know, in the country. And I say that not just because, uh, you know, I am the creator of it, <laughs> but also because we, we pride breaking it down, we dumb it down to where you, know, you can feed, spoon, it, spoon feed it to a kid. And we, we, we track it by spoon, spoon feeding it to kids. Uh, just this past weekend, I had 13 elite athletes, uh, some of the top athletes in Louisiana, Louisiana come in. Uh, so I have a dogs only session on Mondays and Wednesdays. So within that session, I had everyone 
do a 10 yard split. I timed the 10 yard splits. They were all between 156 and 172. Uh, after that, I corrected their form, their stances, and five minutes later, they all ran between one fours, I kid you not, and one five fives. So when I say this becoming a, this is going to become an elite program is because I'm teaching the simplicity of of what it takes to just be you know a great sprinter, man. And a lot of these kids, and you know when it comes to even adults, there's a lot of things we miss when we're younger. Basic technique, how to maximize our explosion, you know, get into a, you know proper stance and really learn how to accelerate. So that's why I feel like it's going to be very very successful, and also time it with uh, GLS and, and Gary Scheffler, man. So what he's doing on the uh, post-injury, uh, pre-injury side is, is second to none. So, like you said, a lot of trains don't come together, so we actually create some special, man. Yeah, uh, absolutely. In that New Orleans area, we, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to see where that collaboration goes from here. And I find that very interesting. You're right. A lot of different trainers, not not a lot of them, but just from social media, right? We see all these different workouts, and they look yeah. like these very very advanced type style workouts yep. or um you know you know it, it just from a perception of somebody who isn't in the training world it, it seems that way but to hear that you're working on the fundamentals and the basics and building athletes from the ground up um, that's what i would assume most trainers do but actually talking about that here on the podcast is uh, is, is nice to hear that you're mm-hmm. talking about creating change not within a year or two years but within five minutes and just saying, yeah. here's the fundamentals that we should be working on. Here's the basics of, uh, you know, how to actually correctly sprint and yeah. uh, you know, work on explosion. And, uh, you know, that is a real change in live time. Yes. So that is, that's great to hear. Yes. Uh, we'll start to wrap up here. One last question that I like to end a lot of my shows with is, you've obviously come a long way, or I should say, uh, you know, you're only 28, but... You know, in that short time, you've come a long way. You made me feel good with that, man. You said a couple of times, you made me feel good with that. I get hard, I get down on myself, like I'm not where I need to be yet. So I, I appreciate that. <laughs> you you have come uh, a, a very long way. Some trainers never open their own facility. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have done that at before, I guess, uh, you were open last year, yeah, 25, 25 years old, right? Some trainers never do that in their entire career. So you are light years ahead of others who have the dream of opening their own facility. And that doesn't just come by, by luck or by chance. Yeah. Uh, that is, it speaks volumes to the trainer that you are. Dion Jones and, and uh, you know, some of these other players, they need to trust you with their, their biggest investment, which is their bodies. Mm-hmm. If they can't perform at a certain level, that is, in the case of the NFL, that can be cost millions and millions of dollars, and that's their yeah. livelihood. So yeah. whoever they trust with their body, it's crucial that – You know, they're going to get the most out of that investment, which is the investment in in your training. Mm -hmm. But to wrap up, uh, I always ask trainers, and and obviously, as I was saying, you've you've come a long way um, in a short period of time. What advice would you give to your younger self, if any, and would you change anything about your your journey? Great question. Uh, Something I would tell my younger self, um, and it's something my younger self did, so I kind of listened to my future self. And that is, um, you know, hard times never last, you know. Um, I, I speak all the time. There's this great analogy on this image on social media with the guys digging, you know, um, for diamonds. And he quits before he's, like, a foot away. He walks away. So hard times never last, man. You, know, you never know how far you're away from, you know, your, your destined destination. So yeah, always stay to it. Yeah, I think... The key there and what we hear from a lot of not only just trainers but in any industry really is just persistence and mm-hmm. and uh, being disciplined and committed to the vision and sooner or later if you want it bad enough and, and not saying that you, you can do you know shitty work and get to yeah. where you want to be you yeah. obviously have to uh, invest in yourself and invest in your education invest in the things that you do but if you stay true to that discipline and, and self motivation and, and uh, you know self education, yep. then sooner or later you are gonna see the payoff. So, 100%. Uh, it was great, AB, uh, as as we mentioned, founder and CEO of ABX to Whole Team Meets podcast. Uh, really interesting to hear your story, and uh, you know thanks thanks for coming on. Appreciate it, Tim. My guys, see you guys soon. <laughs>